Lesson 7 is going to be the advanced ideal gas laws. We're going to discuss molar mass of ideal gases and the density of ideal gases. Using the ideal gas law formula, we can determine the gram formula mass, or the molar mass, of an unknown gas if the mass of the sample was given. We can do this by substituting the moles for the mass divided by GFM formula. So if you take mass, the amount given to you in the question, and you divide it by the gram formula mass, otherwise called the molar mass, it will tell you how many moles you have. Using the amount of moles, you can then put it into the modified PV is equal to NRT formula, and then that can be useful to then find pressure, volume, or temperature. Then notice, if you take your hand and you cover everything on the left before the word moles, it looks just like the formula that we used in the last video. So therefore, you can also state that the mass given to you over the gram formula mass is equal to P times V over the R constant times T. The bottom equation that just popped up is super important for doing ideal gas laws. Another way to look at this example is by using these two different formulas. On the left, we have the gram formula mass is equal to mass times the constant times temperature in Kelvin, all over pressure times volume. You could also switch it around. Let's say you have pressure and volume, but you don't know the GFM. So you could say pressure times volume is again equal to mass times the constant times temperature in Kelvin over the gram formula mass. Both of these formulas are rearrangements from the original formula we just showed you. Wow. It's like right now. It's like wow. We can also use this to determine density of ideal gases. So if you recall, density is equal to mass divided by volume. Density of a gas can be then determined by pressure multiplied by the molar mass divided by the ideal gas constant times temperature. So these are the three formulas you should understand for ideal gas laws. The first one, which is the most basic of the ideal gas law, and then rearrangements of the gas law to find gram formula mass or density. All three of these formulas should be somewhere in your reference table where you will remember where they are. It's like, wow. it's like, Giddy up. The next three problems, again, you are going to be doing on your own and showing us in class that you did them. We will go over them in class and you should check yourself in class. Using those formulas, we're trying to find density. So using the density formula that you just wrote down, you want to determine the density of an unknown gas that has a molar mass, or GFM, of 64 grams, which is at two atmospheres, and is at 20 degrees Celsius. The only conversion that you have to do right away is you must convert your temperature to Kelvin. An unknown gas is found to have a volume, pressure, and temperature held at 2.7 liters, 303 kilopascals, and 303 Kelvin, respectively. Determine the molecular mass of this gas if the mass was found to be 72.0 grams. Now, molecular mass is just another way of saying gram from the mass or molar mass. So please use that formula that incorporates the molar mass. Now we're trying to find the amount of molecules, molecules, in a nitrogen gas sample that occupies a volume at 10 liters at a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius and a pressure of five atmospheres. So this means that you first have to convert 60 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. Then you're gonna plug it in to find the number of moles you have. Once you have figured out how many moles you have, you will multiply it by Avogadro's number.